Dobre utro. Buongiorno. All right, enough of that foolishness. Let's go ahead and get started. So I promised you guys I would finish up on the trading system architecture video today. And here we are. It is Friday, TGIF. And we're going to break down what a trading system architecture is all about. So yesterday, or uh, the previous video rather, we dealt with the concepts of how a trading system is composed. And now we're going to actually look at the architecture. I'm going to try to paint a diagram. I don't mean literally, but I'll try to illustrate some sort of architecture for you guys to visualize, to help you guys understand the concept and how the various components that make up a modern electron electronic trading system works. Let's begin. So first of all, let's talk about the essence of trading. So trading is essentially a collaborative process where you are exchanging something that has value between multiple parties. So for example, with the stock market, I have shares of a particular stock. You would like some shares of that stock. I can sell you that stock and by me selling you the stock, you're able to purchase those stocks. So that's basically a transaction. So we have to build an infrastructure that will facilitate just that type of transaction, exactly that type of transaction. So let's first of all, divide up our environment here. So let's say broker. So broker in some ways you can consider just like you have a real estate broker. So as a real estate broker, I don't actually own real estate, but I'm sort of the middleman that sits between a buyer and a seller that facilitates that transaction. Now with trading, there are actually scenarios where we have what's called agency and principle. So there are situations where you're trading using your own inventory and there's situations where you're trading using inventory that is not your own. So if I follow along with the real estate broker analogy with real estate, you have a real estate agency, which would go along the lines of with trading. when We have uh, an agency trading brokerage. So an agency, if you're trading agency versus principal if you're trading agency, then that means that you are actually not the holder of the asset. So you're not using your own inventory. You are that facilitator, that middleman. That is basically you have two counterparties, one's on one side, one's on the other, buying versus selling. And then they're using you as the brokerage that's operating as an agency to facilitate that transaction. Now, if you're operating as a principal broker, then that means you're trading using your own inventory. So on the other side, we have the market market and let's put our little dividing line right here and bang divided. Okay. So over on this side where we have market, I don't want you to think about only something like an exchange, New York Stock Exchange, for example. The market could actually be an individual. So think about it as a counterparty because you have over the counter transactions where you're actually trading outside of an actual market. So what we're talking about is we can actually have scenarios where I want to do some trades, you want to do some trades and there can be some communication or advertisement of what you have to trade and we can actually do that transaction just sort of point to point as opposed to sending an order to an actual market and having it displayed on the market and participate in a, in a market where you have people from all over the place, different firms, different brokerages that are participating in that particular market. So again, on the market side, this could be an actual exchange or this could be just simply a counterparty, so essentially an entity that you're going to trade with. All right, here we go again with these markers, always giving me a tough time. All right, so this is the New York Stock Exchange. Bump, bump, ba -da -da, bump, bump, ba -da -da. New York. Okay, I can't sing. 
And then down here we will have you. This represents you. So let's just say that's an individual trader that we can actually do transactions with. So you can send orders to an exchange or you can send it to a counterparty like a, a trader or a specific brokerage. All right, so we got the fundamentals down. Let's get down in, into the nitty, nitty gritty, the technology and the, the various components. So trading is going to start with order entry. So that would represent a potential OMS or EMS. And all we're talking about here is some kind of application that you can utilize to actually enter your order and then be able to transmit your order to its destination, which could be, like we said, an exchange or a counterparty. But I like to look at the initial stage as a sort of a two-step process. There is a level of duality that comes from the order entry because generally speaking, a trader is not going to just randomly come in the office in the morning and just start entering a bunch of trades. Thousand shares IBM. No, they're going to have some kind of logic behind why they're looking to purchase certain things. So another key component is going to come from research. And a key component of research or the main component of that research is going to be market data. So you want to be able to see the prices or the market conditions. So what is Apple currently trading for? What was it trading for five minutes ago? What did it close at yesterday? So what was the final price of Apple yesterday? What's been the moving average price of it, uh, a 10 day moving average or whatever metric? What's been happening with this stock historically speaking what is happening with it right now based on that information i'm going to make a decision that we call order entry right that's where you're entering your initial order now another component of research comes from looking at news so you're not just looking at price data which again is the market data which comes from your feed handlers but also you're going to be looking at news so bloomberg is a common source of financial news but there's many other sources of news that you can look at so you can see there's a uh, ceo that's in the news because of some scandal that's going on or there is uh, some new press release about some new technology that uh, you know dji is coming out with they've got some new quadcopter that is going to just revolutionize the game it's going to be able to carry your children to school i mean something you know uh, brown brown <laughs> Groundbreaking, which you think is going to be absolutely amazing. You're anticipating the stock price is going to really go up. You want to jump on board before things really heat up. So that's sort of what happens in the beginning. You have the decision-making process. I am going to decide about what potential opportunities might present themselves in terms of things I want to buy. I want to buy certain securities and hold them with the anticipation that I'm going to make profit by the price rising in the future. There's also going to be a risk analysis because you may have existing positions. So you want to consider, do should I keep holding on to these positions? Like what's my exit point going to be? How long am, am I going to want to hold on to these particular securities? Maybe you've been holding on to Apple stock for quite some time and you've seen, you've seen some really great returns and you've been watching the news and you keep hearing this sort of uh, some negativity on the horizon and you're thinking it might be time to bail. So again, you're looking at the news, making an assessment and then making a decision to do your order entry. I want to buy, I want to sell at what price, at what quantity, right? So market data, news, and essentially I look at those two components as research are going to be sort of the fuel 
behind the decision making process for order entry which you're going to do with an OMS order management system or EMS execution management system and this is where everything starts so let's go ahead and add our feed handler so we can get some market data coming in here I'm going to try red I don't know how good that this color looks to you guys let's do the feed handler here and the feed handler again is just your source of market data or price information and I'll cover this in another video I've talked about this before you have different levels of market data you have level one level two and level three typically what you're gonna be seeing is level one and level two level one just being the top of book which is essentially just showing you the bid and the ask level two giving you depth of market so you have sort of best bid and offer and then you have all the other bids and offers that are below that you're able to get a sense of volume and things like that a lot more details and then you have level three where you'll actually be able to do a lot more that's something you're going to be seeing I don't think I've really worked with a level three data system, but I think that's something more you're going to see a, with a market maker, um, perhaps on an exchange, for example. But the bottom line is the feed handler is your source of your market data. So your price information. So the next thing we're going to need is a data warehouse of some sort. We're also going to need position management. We're also going to need risk management. Then you're also going to need support monitoring. <clears throat> all right, so let's break all this down. So of course you're going to need support monitoring any trading system. You got a lot of risk associated with that trading platform, a lot of money on the table. So I, the way I look at things in finances, I look at it as there's a lot of similarities between investment banking and the medical field in terms of the sense of urgency and how quickly things can go really, really badly. So the main difference is instead of blood, we're dealing with money. Um, but for example, an outage of even a few seconds at the wrong time can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, perhaps even millions of dollars. Because if you have a major market event where let's just say the largest manufacturer of batteries in the United States has a major fire there's a major explosion this is the supplier of batteries to a ton of different companies a fire there would be devastating to industries that rely on those batteries right so as soon as that news hits the wire it's going to trigger a lot of trading events in terms of algorithmically people that are using algorithmic trading solutions will be looking at price changes and it's going to have certain logic that dictates what to do in the event that certain things happen so if the price moves more than a certain amount in a certain period of time do this right so that's going to trigger a lot of aggressive selling perhaps but the bottom line is the market can move very quickly very fast so if you have an outage at that time where every millisecond the price is just moving so rapidly then that few seconds can represent a huge financial loss so when you're dealing with systems like this where we're we're dealing in in the milliseconds the microseconds right um, when we're operating at that level of speed and we're exchanging extremely high amounts of financial value like for example I told you guys one of the processes that I deal with is the closing auction and in the closing auction on a good day I could see three billion to four billion dollars of nominal value so that's a lot of money and therefore a lot of risk so you're gonna need to definitely have really solid and dependable monitoring tools that's going to monitor the entire trading system and make sure that it's operating the way it should and that people are notified the instant that there's any problems or failures and if you can predict failures based on looking at certain metrics so before something actually goes down you're seeing the warning signs that's telling you something's up and you can address it before a failure that's even better but your monitoring is going to be very very key and that's going to plug into 
all of the various backend systems that need to work. Your market data, so you have your various feeds. You want to make sure all the feeds are up so the, the price information is available. You have a feed go down that can cripple trading. How are you going to trade if you don't have price information? Even having price information can still be very bad because the price information needs to be accurate. So you can have prices that are wrong, which again, huge risk. You can have a delayed feed, which is just as bad because basically by the time that you react to prices, those prices are old. You're reacting to prices that have moved already. So the price, the market has already moved away. So you get a price of $100 per share, right? And then you go buying based on $100 per share. But the time when you're entering your order, it's already up to $110 per share, right? So that would be very bad, especially with algorithmic trading that's relying on this price information. You can actually be in a scenario, and I've seen this before, where an algo actually was crippled because the prices that it was basing its decisions on were old so it ended up entering passive prices so meaning at the time that the stock was at the price that's reported to the algorithm the price that the algorithm put on their orders would have made sense it would have been marketable and they would have gotten fills but by the time the algorithm saw this price it was an old price the market already moved up and away from that so what happens is if your algorithm thinks that the current price is hundred dollars per share but it's actually hundred and ten dollars per share because you're looking at old data then the price that the algorithm comes up with to automatically enter orders are going to be away from the market so what happens is when you enter an order that's away from the market too much then you're not going to get executed right it's just like you got to think about uh, like an eBay auction right people are bidding the price up to hundred and ten dollars and you're trying to bid ninety dollars I mean <laughs> you're not gonna get anywhere with that right the price has already moved away so to, to give that same analogy so let's say an item had bid up to $100 and you're like, oh, $100, let me bid 110 Problem is, it actually is up to 150 already. The price you're looking at is old. So you're, whatever you're looking at to tell the price, updated to 100 when it was at 100 Then the price bid up to $150 on eBay, right? But your price didn't update. You're still showing 100 So you go in there bidding 110 thinking oh I'm moving the price up no the price already is higher than that so you're kind of wasting your time so it's very critical that all these systems are working and working the way that they should be so not only is the feed up but the feed is operating as it should so there's no latency so you don't have prices that are old coming in right so monitoring is going to be a key component you also have your data warehouse so you need to have record keeping so whenever you're entering your orders and they're getting filled and you're modifying your orders you need to store records of this information so that information is going to be stored in some kind of database and you also need there's a uh, compliance requirements as well where you need to make this information be available for a certain period of time for compliance reasons so you have external agencies that may want to do audits so you may if there's an audit scenario that comes up they'll do certain surveillance and looking at your 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 history of your transactions and they want to be able to look at your records and they'll be looking for certain patterns that indicate you're doing something that is in violation of certain rules or potentially fraudulent so you you have to not only make sure you you have this records of your your transactions because obviously how is the front end system going to keep track of your order how many shares have been filled how many orders went out and then as your order gets updated you need somewhere to store that information so that's where the database comes in and that's going to tie directly in with these other components that we mentioned we talked about the portfolio management or position management and also risk management and or controls so portfolio management is you need some kind of system to track your positions 
I've bought a thousand shares of a particular stock. I sold 500 shares. So now I am long 500, right? So I need something to track that. So that's going to be some kind of application, usually in the back end. Remember, all this is going to be in the Unix environment. The front end usually in Windows environment. The rest of this is going to be a Unix environment. And so you need to have some application that is going to track your, your positions. And that can be done via a flat file or, or a database, depends on, on the application. Now, risk management is you need to be able to track and control your risk exposures. So for example, there's uh, uh, something called buying power. So buying power is metric of what you have to work with in terms of how much buying and selling you can do. So obviously if I wanna buy $2 million worth of a particular stock and I have a million dollars buying power, it's not gonna happen. So what you can do is you can actually request your buying power to be increased by your, your trading desk and then they can increase it up to that level if it's approved and then you can go ahead and enter that order. But the idea is you don't wanna just give all of your traders the ability to just buy and sell as much as they want and expose the firm as you know to whatever level they want to that would be a bad idea imagine one trader entering an order that essentially uses up all of the firm's cash and then things go south pretty much put the firm in a very bad situation i mean you can essentially shut them down right because if you run out of money then you're you're in pretty bad shape so you want to have certain controls where you're limiting your exposure levels so the amount of cash that the traders have available to them also how large of an order they can can enter also there may be diversity restrictions in terms of you hear the term diversify your portfolio so maybe you want to limit the size of a position in any particular security by a certain dollar amount so you you're not allowed to have a position larger than a million dollars per security right and a lot of different things you could have a certain desk which has a lot of different controls in terms of how many shares and again the diversity of the portfolio but you need some kind of system to monitor these things and to restrict as necessary the traders activities so if you try to enter an order that is larger than what restrictions have been placed on you then that order gets blocked internally before it actually gets out to the market and gets executed so we have these controls that are within the trading environment which will restrict what kinds of orders you can and cannot enter in terms of again many metrics that we discussed previously so all of this is going to be connected to your order management system or EMS so you have risk management, which is this can be di directly connected to the data warehouse or it can be connected to your portfolio management system. So the position management tracking right here will show you all the different positions, which trader, which desk, right? Risk management can have the metrics in terms of what are the limits, right? So when this trader enters an order, it's tracked or stored in the database. If that database is monitored by the risk management system, either directly or through the position management system, then it's gonna be able to identify if there's any violations. So the risk management system could be designed to be able to block an order that violates some kind of rule. So the trader enters the order, it goes into the system, it's recorded in the, in the database here somewhere, and then the risk management system can actually identify that there's a violation on that order, and then that system would have to be empowered some way to, to block this order. So essentially the trader will see a reject on his screen, and it'll be like an internal reject saying, you know, um, 
position violation or something. So of course the support monitoring has to track everything here. So support monitoring is going to be looking at database issues, your position management. It's going to be looking at your risk. Pretty much every single component of the trading system because you want you want to make sure all this stuff is working. You want something that's monitoring your your feed. And let's connect the feed handler to the trading application. And then let's get our orders out the door. So you got to have connectivity which will take you out to the market with a counterparty. But before you get out there, you're going to need some kind of order routing systems. Order router here. So it's a little bit more complex than anticipated in terms of being able to illustrate it on this board here. I really feel like there's a lot more information that I could have provided here, but it's a lot of things going on. You got a lot of different components and showing how they interact is a little bit of a challenge, but hopefully you guys get the main point of what I'm trying to illustrate here. Um, I mean, we didn't even illustrate where, for example, the fix engine might be represented fix trading system and the relationship between the order entry orders being written to the database and how these applications are connected and interacting with that database and how they're able to send like an internal reject back to the, the platform. And one of the complexities as well is this is a generic sort of electronic trading system um, illustration. There are a lot of different ways to accomplish these tasks that I'm illustrating here. So I, please do not look at this as, you know, this is how electronic si trading system works and you have this, 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 this. These are, look at this really uh, conceptually. In every trading system, you're going to see variations of what I described here. There's going to be different uh, technological implementations or solutions to achieve the same task that I have presented here. Now, just to illustrate, for example, in my illustration here, I represented a risk management system and a position system as two separate backend applications that are running in a Unix environment. But at one firm, these could actually be a single application. So you can have a single application that is responsible for managing and tracking your positions as well as doing the risk management. Perhaps in a buy side firm where you, you really have the orders being originated here in the OMS, maybe the OMS itself has built in risk controls so you don't have a separate system. Because in theory, we could have a trading desk where you have multiple people using this front end OMS and the OMS can be interconnected. So every single client of this OMS can be connected somehow, either directly or through the database to where the tracking of all the positions and all the risk controls can be implemented from the front end as opposed to on the back end. So a lot of different approaches in terms of how things are done. The feed handler uh, in a, a, a more simple system where you have like, let's say for example, a really small uh, extreme example where it's just like one trader, then you just have the feed handler feeding, feeding data to that trader. But you have a, a huge desk where you have hundreds of traders, then that feed handler can multicast all of the price information to all of the traders at the same time. So instead of just having this single connection like this, the, the data can be simultaneously broadcast to all of the clients. Everyone's getting the price information um, and er everything's operating as it should. So I will, I will, uh, I think what I'm going to do, I think the best way to do this is I'm going to do uh, another video 
where I'm going to utilize my good friend uh, Photoshop, Mr. Photoshop, to produce some. Um, I spent a little bit more time. This was kind of freestyle. This kind of uh, going through the concepts and the ideas from a more visual standpoint. But what I'll do is I'll spend some more time on in Photoshop and actually try to produce something that's a little bit more intricate and then perhaps what I'll do is I can edit some of that with this video so you have this giving you sort of the fundamentals and then perhaps I'll interject some of those uh, some of those uh, Photoshop diagrams to go better with this because I mean let, let's be honest my my uh, I'm not an artist <laughs> I am not an artist so uh, you know I, I tried. I tried. I, I did my best. All right, guys. This is Carl Speaks Wall Street, and this is part two of Electronic Trading System Architecture. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Click on the like button, subscribe, smash that bell. And uh, until the next episode, everyone be well. Ciao. Arrivederci. Oh, my goodness. I'm hungry. Oh, yeah. Just uh, go ahead and click on the like button. Thank you. Grazie. Merci.